Welcome to an example of integration using trig substitution that also requires completing the square. However, before using trig substitution, we should verify that basic u substitution would not work. For example, here, we might try letting u equal x squared minus six x plus five. But notice then differential u is equal to two x minus six dx. Notice how the integrand does contain an x here, but not minus a constant, and therefore this u substitution won't work. Then when applying trig substitution, the form of the square root determines the type of substitution we will make. And there are three cases. If our square root is in the form of the square root of a squared minus x squared, where a squared is a constant, we use x equals a sine theta. If we have the square root of a squared plus x squared, we use x equals a tangent theta. And if we have the square root of x squared minus a squared, we use x equals a secant theta. So looking at our square root, currently it does not fit any of these three forms. So what we're gonna do is complete the square on x squared minus six x. So to set this up, let's write this as the square root of x squared minus six x. Next we're going to add a special constant to make this a perfect square trinomial. And then we have plus five. Then whenever we add here, we'll have to subtract to maintain the equality. So to complete the square, we take half of the coefficient of x and then square it. Well, half of negative six is negative three. Negative three squared is positive nine. So we'll add nine here and then undo this by subtracting nine here. Notice now if we factor this, we'd have two binomial factors, x and x. The factors of nine that add to negative six are negative three and negative three. We have a perfect square trinomial now. We can write this as the quantity x minus three squared. So let's write this as the integral of x divided by the square root of the quantity x minus three squared. And then we have plus five minus nine, which would be minus four. Notice how now this square root does fit the form of the square root of x squared minus a squared, where a squared would be four, and therefore a is two. Instead of x squared, we have the quantity x minus three squared. So this x minus three will affect our substitution. We won't just use x equals a secant theta, we'll use x minus three equals a secant theta. Therefore, our substitution, again, will be x minus three equals two secant theta, and therefore x would be equal to two secant theta plus three, and dx would be equal to two secant theta tangent theta d theta. Let's sketch a reference triangle for angle theta. This is angle theta. Notice that secant theta would be equal to x minus three divided by two, which would be the ratio of the hypotenuse to the adjacent side. So we can label this side x minus three, the adjacent side two, and therefore this other leg using the Pythagorean theorem would be equal to the square root of the quantity x minus three squared minus two squared or minus four. Or if we wanted to, if we multiplied this out, of course it would equal the square root of x squared minus six x plus five. Now let's perform the substitution. X is equal to two secant theta plus three dx is equal to two secant theta tangent theta d theta. The denominator is going to be the square root of x minus three squared, which would be four secant squared theta minus four. Now let's begin to simplify this on the next slide. Let's begin by simplifying the square root. We know from our notes it's gonna simplify nicely to two tangent theta, but let's show why. 
If we factor out the four, we'd have the square root of four times the quantity secant squared theta minus one, but secant squared theta minus one equals tangent squared theta. So we have four times tangent squared theta, which would give us two tangent theta. Now we can write this as the integral of, the numerator stays the same, and the denominator is now two tangent theta. So notice how the two simplify to one. We also have a factor of tangent theta that simplifies out. So now if we distribute the secant theta, we have the integral of two secant squared theta plus three secant theta. And now using our basic integration formulas, the integral of two secant squared theta would give us two tangent theta, and the integral of three secant theta would be equal to three times the natural log of the absolute value, secant theta, plus tangent theta, plus c. But we're not quite done because we want this in terms of x, not theta. Now we'll perform a substitution for tangent theta here and here, as well as secant theta, and to do this, we'll use the reference triangle on the previous slide. Notice that tangent theta would be equal to this square root divided by two, or the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side, and secant theta would be equal to the ratio of the hypotenuse to the adjacent side, or x minus three divided by two. So that would give us two times the square root of the quantity x minus three squared minus four, divided by two, and then we'd have plus three times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus three divided by two for secant theta plus tangent theta. Notice how here we have a common factor of two that simplifies out. So we have the square root here Notice here we have a common denominator of two, so we could factor out one half. Leaving us with the quantity x minus three plus the square root. Now I probably would leave the answer like this, but just to show how we could simplify this further, because we have a product here of one half and this quantity here, we could write this as a sum of two natural logarithms. So we could write this as plus three natural log, the absolute value of x minus three plus the square root. And then we'd have plus three natural log one half plus c. But because three natural log one half is a constant, we could absorb this into our constant of integration and therefore we could give the antiderivative in the form of the square root plus three natural log, the absolute value of x minus three plus the square root. Plus, let's call it c sub one, where c sub one is equal to three natural log one half plus c. This really isn't necessary, but you may find this as the antiderivative in the back of a textbook. But I think you'd probably be okay leaving the antiderivative in this form here, or if you want, this form here. I hope you found this helpful.